And you have the ascending pathways have four different ways to the brain. Uh, the medial le lemniscus pathway carries info about proprioception, touch, pressure, and vibration from receptors to the medulla. And the medulla's job in the brain is to kind of coordinate our movements. You have postsynaptic, and this is info from mechanoreceptors and nociceptors. And then you have spinal thalamic uh, tract, which is, receives a wide variety of stimuli, including nociceptives, and is specific second-order stimulation. I'll talk about talk about this more in a second. And then you find your finally you have your spinomesencephalic tract. This is noxious stimulation. Um, and the spinomesencephalic and spinal thalamic play significant roles in body's pain modulation. And what I mean by that is, if you look at the word spinomesencephalic tract, uh, you'll see if you break down the word spino, meaning spine, mesen, which is an old, uh, I want to say Greek or Latin word for old, and cephalic meaning spine or brain and tract. So this is the old spinal brain track. And basically what scientists think is that through the hundreds and thousands of years of evolution that we all had this one track and all our pain and stimulation was, was gone, went through this track to our body. And um, through the years what our body has learned is uh, certain stimulations just require a, a quick reaction. So let's say a caveman picks up a hot rock out of the fire. And in the spinal mesencephalic tract, that stimulation would have to travel up from the hand, holding the hot rock up to the brain. The brain would have to s interpret that as a hot burning rock and decide what to do. And then, then it would have to send that message back down to the hand saying, let go of that rock. In the meantime, you're holding this hot rock and it's just burning and burning your skin. So what the scientists think is we've kind of developed these, and this, and this is the spinal thalamic track, which are sort of shortcuts um, in our hard wiring. So anytime you set, touch something hot, something sharp, you are automatically let go or recoil. So you touch a hot rock, and then the minute it senses that hotness, the, the body automatically lets go. It's just a built-in reaction. And they think that that's just been something that's kind of come over with evolution. And so this is really our, what we use most of the time. You touch a hot, you touch a sharp tack with your finger, you automatically recoil. And so we don't really use that. We still use it to some extent. Not sh the scientists aren't sure as to how much, but definitely it, this is an older track that we really don't use anymore as much as this new shortcut. Now you have your third and fourth order afferents. The third order afferents transmit info from the reticular formation to the thalamus. And then your fourth order afferents transmit impulses within the centers of the cerebral cortex. So basically, the third order afferents are where, you're, where these stimulations are interpreted and then scattered to the appropriate area. And then um, the fourth order afferents get that information and decide what to do with it and send it back down to the body. And these afferents are essential for the brain to detect, decipher, and respond to pain and stimuli. Um, the high centers in the brain include the spinal cord, the medulla, uh, which is controls, like I said, controls the coordination and, and proprioception, and the thalamus. Again, this is the relay system, uh, station for any kind of pain stimulation. But it's also where the limbic system is located, and the limbic system is what controls our emotions. So that's why when someone has a lot of pain, they get those uh, emotional responses, especially someone with a, a chronic pain, and they're always and that that area is always being stimulated. You may that's where you're going to see a lot of psychological problems with depression and anger, um, and then even in acute injury, someone gets hurt, they might get really angry, and they're normally not a, a angry type of person, or they. They're a pretty tough person, but they just start crying, or they feel sick to their stomach, or they get the break out in cold sweats. These are all um, because the information's going through that thalamus, and it's going through that emotional center in the limbic system. And then finally, the cerebral cortex, which uh, is sensory and mechanical interpretation of stimuli. So ways that we modulate the pain, and the first is uh, gate control. 
which was developed by Melzack and Wall in 1965. And basically what it says is the body possesses overlapping pain control mechanisms. The substantia gelatinosa, which is located in the dorsal horn, serves as a gate that can be opened and closed to pain sensory. And so normally that gate is open and sensory input is passed through the substantia, substantia gelatinosa. When nociceptors are stimulated, the gate is closed and only noxious stimulant is passed through. So basically, what it's saying is when, uh, let's say you're walking along and normally only sensations that are going through is just the feel of the air against your skin and the clothes against your skin, but suddenly you bump your elbow and that noxious stimulation is passed through the substantia gelatinosa. And what happens is you start getting that pain stimulation and your body has, what it can do is if you provide it a different kind of stimulation rather than the pain, like a sensory stimulation, and you can do this by rubbing your elbow where you bumped it, it'll actually block the flow of the pain stimulation. And so what types of mod modalities can be used to modulate pain based on this theory? Well, anything with sensory anything that can uh, provide some kind of sensory information such as massage, uh, cold or hot, or even electrical stimulation. The other one is, the other uh, way we can modulate pain is the endogenous opiates, and basically natural painkillers that originate in the body. They bind to receptors in the synaptic cleft which will not allow neurotransmission to be passed along. So you're blocking pain at the cellular level. And Castle, in 1979, developed three models. The ascending influence model, descending influence model, and the beta endorphin mediated model. Basically, the ascending influence model is enkephalins released in the first and second order neuron synapse. Synapse, this is um, enkephalin will inhibit the release of substance P. So this is kind of the idea that uh, you, what you're doing is you're trying to start that pain that pain relief right away so um, and all of these modules modulation theories have one thing in common you kinda use pain to get rid of the pain basically you what you're gonna do is sort of uh, provide a uncomfortable stimulation what that does is it makes the body think that there's more pain more damage and it releases that natural painkillers uh, an example of this is the Interex, uh, the Interex, and that's that buzzy machine that um, I don't know if you, you may have seen used at s in some of the training rooms. And what it does is it just really uh, creates a real unpleasant feeling. And what it does is it makes the body release those natural opiates. And it does this in the first and second orders. So the Interex is really supposed to be used on the sideline. Someone gets uh, thigh bruise in football, they come out of the game, you immediately start doing that Interex. And what it does is it prov provides a real uh, sharp kind of uh, stinging pain from the machine, which will block the uh, pain from the thigh bruise. You also have the descending influence model. These are third order neurons release serotonin, depolarized and keflin. Um, interneurons and the keflin is released in the first and second order neurons. So basically, um, this explains the success of acupuncture and e stem. What you're doing with this is you're just creating some kind of stimulation, usually unpleasant, either by putting pens in certain areas or e stem in certain areas, and that will get rid of the pain and release natural opiates that way. And finally, the beta endorphin mediated pain control model. Again, same thing, you're, you're providing a, uh, uncomfortable stimulation, usually with e-stem. Um, what, usually what I'll do with this is I'll hook someone up to a really strong e-stem and turn it up to where it's pretty much, they almost can't stand it anymore, so it's causing some pain. But you leave it on for about 20 to 40 minutes, and this prolonged stimulation will really ha make the body release those natural opiates into the body, into the the bloodstream and that way after you hook them up after you've taken them off the e-stem they still feel the effects of that pain modulation because those endorphins are, are going through the body still and they have the pain relief 30 40 even a couple hours after you've taken the e-stem off so some things to think about when we're 
when you're going through the studying this stuff is how does the understanding of pain help in the recognition of injuries how does the understanding of pain help in the application of therapeutic modalities and how will the understanding of pain modulation theories affect your creation of treatment protocols